Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bitcoin Brief with your host, Tone Vase. We were not able to get Leah on and no one else seems to be around, but <laughs> I am joined by the one and only Jimmy Thong. Thanks again for joining me on the show, Jimmy. Yeah, it's like the old days, just you and me, man. I know. Um, anything new? It's been about a week. Uh, anything changed? If not, we're going right into the stories. Let's go right into the stories. I, I, I'm as curious about the price as everybody else. Uh, I know. Let's see how fast we can go through the stories and then get to the price. Um, so let's get over to our screen share. Oops, that's just a teaser. That's not where we're going. We're going to talk about Bitcoin SV, uh, the other <laughs> Bitcoin or people think that is Bitcoin. I know Kevin Pham like tweeted at me yesterday for no reason whatsoever, uh, but uh, maybe I can pull up that tweet. So Bitcoin SV, I mean, they're irrelevant at this point. I, I tried helping to make them relevant only because uh, it, it would help the overall Bitcoin economy. If Bitcoin SV people continue to fight with uh, Bitcoin ABC people, <laughs> uh, but uh, that didn't really work out. Uh, like, like well, it worked out for a little bit, but now uh, they're completely being ignored uh, as they should be. So Bitcoin SV and their 128 megabyte blocks, uh, they can't handle the, the block weight. And uh, they were looking at their reorgs, really disappointing that Bitcoin ABC uh, and like the Bcash people didn't go to 128 megabyte blocks yet, but they swear that they will. <laughs> but now perhaps that they won't. Uh, so, uh, I mean, this is, uh, of course, I mean, like Jimmy, you can talk about the, um, you know, the tech side of large blocks and why they're stupid. Uh, but my real question is, when are we gonna see the same thing with Bcash so that that one becomes just as irrelevant as this one? Well, so I, and first of all, the, this, this was six blocks of, uh, of reorg. So that, that's like a significant amount. On Bitcoin, if, you have, if, if we had leave even like a three block reorg, that would be considered like catastrophic to, to a large degree because there are merchants and uh, services that take uh, you know, three block confirmation. Uh, but on Bitcoin SV, because of their giant blocks, including one block that had 128 megabytes, which is the absolute top limit on uh, uh, on Bitcoin SV, it caused a giant reorg because uh, you know not enough nodes were able to download it, and uh, and they went with like a smaller one that somebody else. Uh, you know, found around that same time. The thing about like when you have a large block like this, it isn't just downloading 128 megabytes from like one source. Um, you know, the the one that mined that 128 megabyte block can only really, it, I mean, they have limited uplink, right? Uh, up, upload bandwidth. Um, and say they have like a gigabit ethernet. That, that means that you know, I, they they can maybe connect to one or one or two within like a 20, 30 second window, something like that, uh, and and give them give them uh, the blocks, and and then those have to now use all of their uplink to uh, you know transmit and and so on. So it that that block just didn't propagate very quickly, and this is something that core devs have been warning up warning everyone about for a long time. And of course, uh, you know, well, so wait, Jimmy, not, 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 not just core devs, like mm -hmm. programming illiterates like myself have been warning about <laughs> this for three years back when I was debating Roger over Bitcoin Unlimited. Like, yeah. like this, this wasn't rocket science to figure out. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, like <laughs> when you're thinking about 128 megabytes, it's not just a one-time 128 megabyte download. We've all done that, right? Like, uh, you know, if you're downloading some sort of like install for Linux or something like that, those are like gigabytes sometimes. But it's 128 megabytes to every single node on your system. That's a lot of uplink, guys. And that, that, that's a lot of downloading. And 10 and minutes later, not, there might be another one. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and and like think think about like how long your torrent takes, right? Like that's the scale that we're talking about. Oftentimes, like uh, oftentimes, if you're downloading like a 300 megabyte thing, it takes you a few minutes, even if you're on a gigabyte uplink. And that's just you know you downloading from pretty much a bunch of other peers. Um, you can't have that in any sort of like decentralized system that's a ledger system. Because that, that uh, you know, I mean, like in those few minutes, somebody else is going to find the block. Now you have a, 
a, a conflict and really a race to get to a longer block size, uh, longer chain and, and so on. So, I mean, this is why we don't want large blocks uh, or blocks that are too big. And uh, I mean, Luke Dash Jr. argues that even like one megabyte is probably too big. And like, I think, think might, about I think, uh, Hey, Jimmy, I think with time, Luke Dash Jr. might win that argument and blocks are going to be smaller. I mean, he, he's, uh, he's very good at like analyzing things. Um, he, he's maybe not the best at communicating it to everybody in a way that um, that's a tactful maybe, but I mean, he's been right about a lot of stuff. And, uh, and th this, is, this is definitely one of those things where a hundred megabytes, I mean, like even 32 megabytes, which I think is the Bitcoin ABC limit, I, you you test it enough and you have enough nodes, um, you know you're you're going to suffer the same thing. The thing is, with most of these systems, uh, what ends up happening is people just stop running full nodes, and then you have maybe like ten nodes in the world or something like kind of like what That's Ethereum their goal. has. I mean, they're not. See, bit. See, this is why. Uh, this is why I I always respected Bitcoin SV a lot more than Bcash because they're not in denial of the centralization of their network. They're <laughs> like, well, there should be 10 nodes. You should not be running a node, right? Like, like they're a lot more open about it. And I have to kind of respect that. I mean, they were always looking to do a centralized sensor your transactions chain. Uh, now, now Bcash is going to go in that same direction, but they're, but, but they're not admitting the centralization of their network, which is why I can't respect them. Well, I, I like the the crazy thing is, you know, Calvin Air, you know, every everyone's making fun of him for saying gigamegs, but I think they really want to go to like a gigabyte block, at which point like the propagation time on that is gonna be like an hour, right? Like, I mean, it's going to cause a fork I mean, every yeah, single time you have a large block. But Jimmy, not if Calvin Air is running the only node, then there's no propagation time at all. I mean, that's where yeah. they're headed. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, and I mean, that that's really the only way to do it. I, and, you know, I've argued this for a long time about Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin SV. And that that's that, you know, like eventually you're 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 going to be very centralized. And at that point, uh, because the mining re or, or either that or you're going to have a situation where the fee, like it's so easy to attack uh, your your network because the fees are so low relative to how much work you have to do that double spending becomes a giant problem or you're going to just have to you know create more supply of that money and give the miners more of a sub sub subsidy making it not a limited cap but like an unlimited cap kind of like what Dogecoin and Ethereum have. Yeah, I love I love the excuses that their fanboys are making. What from blocks? <laughs> Sure, not a bug. <laughs> well, I if uh, if that's what they want, I guess that's what they'll get. I, I, I mean, it's it's just not really useful for anything. I, I mean, orphan blocks just make it very hard to come to consensus. I suspect that a lot of the exchanges that delisted BSV, they're they're really just sort of uh, protecting themselves. I mean, they're they're saying they they're trying to get some credit from the Bitcoin community by delisting it, but. I mean, the, the number of confirmations required for BSV on a lot of these exchanges was already at like 100 blocks. So, I mean, at, at this point, I, I don't think it's really safe un, unless you're taking like two, 300 blocks. Um, and, you know, after the halving, it's probably going to double. So I, if you're at like a length that's that big, given the giant blocks that they have, um, it's not going to be worth it for an exchange because the risk of double spending and people screwing you over it, it just becomes so gigantic. So I suspect that played a major role in a lot of these exchanges getting rid of uh, BSV. Uh, no, I think it was all political. I think if they could still collect the fees, they would. But hey, I'm glad they delisted Bitcoin SV. You know, it's a start. <laughs> It's uh, you are on your way now. All you have to do is delist the other two thousand nine hundred shit coins, and then you can actually get some respect. Uh, but uh, but yeah, but hey, it's a start. You know, you got to start somewhere uh, with the delisting. Um, sure. Okay. Um, let's move on to the mining side of things, kind of. Uh, I got I saw this tweet. I'm actually I haven't read the article. Unfortunately, I'm about to click on it now. Uh, Belarus president proposes giant data center for Bitcoin mining. 
Now, uh, Belarus is one of the former Soviet uh, Union nations. It's, uh, it is a standalone now. It's a little dictatorial, uh, but uh, it seems to be functioning okay. Uh, but I know, I know people that are living there, they actually moved there not that long ago. So they like it. I'm not too familiar with Belarus. Uh, what's wrong with my thing here? But uh, I'm just gonna talk about the general concepts, right? Now, uh, what happens if uh, government starts to actually put in money into data centers to mine Bitcoin? Uh, what does that mean for the ecosystem? I'll throw the question right at you, Jimmy. Well, I, I, I think uh, a lot of these places have a lot of energy sources that are sort of remote and things like that. And, um, and you know, I, I think Valentin Schmidt, uh, uh, he, he wrote an article a while back about a particular mine in one of the Scandinavian countries that was bringing in all these Bitcoin miners straight into the mine because they had a large energy source that they couldn't really transmit too, uh, too easily to other places. And this was a way to monetize it. I, I think essentially this is a way to um, add development to a country uh, without and, you know, create wealth for the country without um, essentially uh, like essentially getting getting it uh, getting development uh, and having it pay for itself. Um, I, I, like you could, uh, we've known for a long time. Like hydroelectric dams, they're they're very good for energy. I mean, it's extremely clean, right? Like you, uh, like the uh, marginal cost of the energy is very little, um, and so the cost of the energy tends to be fairly small. Uh, the, the problem has always been the transmission of that energy to the places where it's in demand. And that tends to be in cities and in large industrial complexes and stuff. And they tend to be far away from where you can actually build the hydroelectric dam and so on. And it's the same for almost every other kind of energy source, um, you know, geothermal and, uh, you know, solar arrays and, uh, and wind farms and everything else. So it doesn't surprise me that uh, that that's that's what Belarus is doing. They they probably have areas in their country that are very not populated at all. They're not really doing anything with that area of the country, but they want to use it and monetize that area of that country. And Bitcoin mining uh, happens to be a very good way to do that. And it's an option uh, that government officials are finally recognizing as uh, as some as viable. So. Uh, yeah, I, I expect more of that to happen. I mean, if, if you have a lot of land, uh, which a lot of these governments do, and uh, being from the former Eastern Bloc, um, they don't have quite the development that the that Western Europe does. Um, you know, this this a uh, you know why not right? Like try try stuff and see if you can get uh, your country developed, especially out of uh, in in places that can use the employment and things like that. And, you know, also develop and create uh, like an ecosystem or an economy around these areas, um, you know, and, and make your country better. I mean, how, wh why is that bad? Right? Like it's, it's, I'm, it's going, I'm, going the other, I'm going the other way on this one, <laughs> Jimmy. Uh, I really am. And uh, it, it's, it's interesting, like your views and my views. So, I, I just read this comment supposedly from the president and now I'm not sure if this article is a joke or not, but, uh, but it says here, you are my children. I've created you with my own hands as well as I could. Uh, you wanted cryptocurrency, crypto exchanges, crypto mining and the rest. Uh, you wanted to set up the farms. Now you are growing up and can suggest where we move on from here. We are going to move in this direction as effectively and as far as you would like. Now, um, now, ideally, if it's a, like a fully, uh, see, this is my problem, right? Like this is a borderline dictator. And the only reason to do this is for personal thing. It's like using government and people's resources to mine Bitcoin where he gets to keep all of the Bitcoin, right? So it's very debatable whether this is actually doing it for the country or finding a way to abuse government resources as a dictatorial power of that country in order to just make yourself richer. Yeah, uh, I mean, so I, I don't, I don't know what his motives are, and he might very well be a very bad person that's just trying to enrich himself. Um, but and that that wouldn't surprise me in the least. 
But I'm just saying that the op option of using land or resources that you have that isn't being used effectively uh, through Bitcoin mining, like develop them is, is an option. Yeah, no, I'm all for that, right? Like I'm all for having some kind of a deal in place with your government that, that would allow private companies to take advantage of you know, the land and the ability to generate cheap electricity without A, the government taking that away once you build something uh, off of that land, and two, uh, not having them you know, tax you to death on the Bitcoin that you're mining. Uh, but I do believe that this needs to be a private endeavor, uh, just you know, utilizing uh, the, the land currently owned by the set government instead of the government itself doing it. It's like the whole oil situation in Venezuela, like uh, a country with the most oil is in the shittiest global you know, environment, right? Because the government had control of that oil instead of just leasing that land to private companies that know what they're doing. Uh, so... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see where this is headed and uh, we'll keep an eye on more stories like it. Okay. Um, I'll, unless you have another comment, we'll move on. Uh, let's move on. All right. So uh, this is interesting. Came across the wire this morning. It's some kind of, uh, it, it looks like another browser for now, uh, but the Chrome extension might be coming. And it's a way to... Uh, pay for your Amazon products with Bitcoin through Lightning. And on the back end, Amazon knows nothing about Bitcoin. So this is like uh, a, a simpler version of purse.io, I guess. And uh, only without the, the, mer the matching, right? So this is, um, so it's a company uh, started with only $100,000. It doesn't look like there is an ICO. At least I hope there was no ICO. And uh, it's great that they're using Safe book <laughs> as book as an example. And it's, uh, it's an extension, uh, you know, Moon extension uh, from the company. And then you're paying with your Lightning wallet. And on the back end, they use the credit card merchant services to pay Amazon. And then you still get your stuff delivered, uh, but you've paid in Bitcoin. And uh, looks very, very interesting. And I mean, eventually Amazon will accept Bitcoin as a payment method. And then these companies will go away by default. Uh, but for now, this is cool. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was really hoping that it would be more like purse.io where you can actually get a discount on some of the Amazon stuff. Um, but uh, at least from my read of the story, it seems like um, they're actually taking a cut of the credit card processing. And that, that's where they make their money. So it's just sort of retail price. Um, I, I guess it's better for it if you, if you want like the free shipping and everything else. Uh, but as far as the actual, um, uh, yeah, like discount and stuff, I, I, I'd rather use purse <laughs> to, to get that discount or something like that. I, I wish they would incentivize the actual Lightning Network usage by getting you that discount and having some sort of matching agent on the back. Maybe, maybe Purse can acquire this company and integrate everything in exactly the same way. Uh, I, I prefer it the other way around. As you know, I'm not <laughs> a huge fan of Purse and their push for big blocks and all this other nonsense that they believe in. But, uh, uh, but yes. Um, all right. Let's, um, you know what? Let's cover this story since we are on uh, Bitcoin. So Rodolfo Novak, I don't know, I haven't heard from him in a while. Maybe he's busy uh, with his company. Uh, he mentioned this to us uh, just before we were going to do our last Bitcoin brief. We had way too many stories, couldn't cover it. But uh, Toronto now has a Bitcoin gift card in, in several stores. And it's interesting. So it's coming from the Rise wallet. Uh, so my understanding of it is literally you buy a gift card and then you can redeem. Uh, you, so you pay the merchant like $25 in cash. You buy this gift card. There's no private key on the gift card itself, but then you can, uh, because otherwise everybody would like freaking steal it. Uh, but then you can move $25 worth of Bitcoin uh, into your wallet. So it's like almost another way to anonymously buy Bitcoin at your convenience store. So that's pretty cool. Uh, for now, that's just in Toronto, but uh, hopefully it'll spread to others. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's kind of like a Bitcoin ATM without all of the AML KYC, I guess. Um, yeah, that, that would be useful. 
Yeah, so that's interesting. So go ahead and check that out. Uh, you know, we, uh, we kind of trust Rodolfo's sense of uh, companies and non-scamminess. Uh, so there you go. There's another wallet, uh, Rise Wallet, that should be pretty good. And uh, check that out. Yeah, I, I'm okay. really curious about the security, though. Like, how do you, like, if you could just scratch off the back and scan it, like you said, it, it would be exactly the same as, like, cash lying in the store and it would be shoplifted all over the place. I'm sure there's some sort of, like, UPC that needs to be registered with some sort of a central server and then and then like you can redeem it um, like how most gift cards work, I imagine. Yeah, so so there's the back of the card, guys. So you can go ahead and read that. Uh, yeah, they do have a way like, uh, uh, I, I, again, well, when I'm in Toronto, I'm going to try and test this out and use it until it, you know, moves around the world. Okay. Um, let's move on to, that's a price story. Let's stick with, with this, uh, Jimmy, you sent this over. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what this is, so go for it. Yeah, this is a way to, uh, I mean, it's kind of like the, uh, the mempool thing that we look at every morning when I do the weather report. It's a lot like that, except it's, uh, it's a lot more specific and you can, you can take a look at how many transactions that are in the mempool currently have these at a particular range. So uh, you can see the one, two, there's 5,948 transactions in that one, two range. Um, and like three, four range, 4,311 and so on. Um, and then what's the other number below it? I, I think um, uh, there, wait, wait, go, go up a little bit. Yeah, uh, oh, number of transactions in the last 24 hours. Uh, and number of transactions in mempool in the last 366 hours. So yeah, so what, one is uh, last 24 hours and one is in the last 336 hours. So uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a different way of looking at fees. And this is one of the things that you can use to figure out what fee you should put in. Um, I, I, I usually like just uh, like, and depending on the urgency and things like that, um, you can, figure out like how long it will take. Uh, they give you the delay and time on the right hand side. Uh, so they're, they're saying it'll probably take around three blocks, uh, 74 minutes or 840 minutes or something like that. Um, you can go down a little bit more and you'll, you'll see that it keeps reducing as you pay more and more fees, which is exactly what you should expect to happen. Um, and that's, that's uh, you know, it, it can be a useful resource. Um, I don't know why they say it's always going to take three blocks. There's probably a bug in their code, but it's, it's another resource. Uh, and I thought it was cool. All right, cool. Go ahead and check this out, guys. All of these links are in the video description. All right, we got two more things to cover. Uh, oh, maybe I should talk about that one last. Uh, let's talk about this one. So uh, it looks like another cool book uh, written by a core contributor that tries to simplify Bitcoin. Uh, we should definitely try to get him for our next Understanding Bitcoin conference. Uh, but uh, we have the uh, Gorking Bitcoin book. Is this self-published? Grocking. Grocking. <laughs> you're, you're offending every Heinlein fan. Um, uh, so Grocking yeah, Bitcoin. No idea, I have no idea what that is either, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, you, you, you have to read, have read, um, you know, that... that um, that book, I, I can't remember the title, but it, the whole concept of grokking comes from that Heinlein book. Um, and he's a sci-fi author, been around a long time, et cetera, et cetera. But grokking basically means understanding at a deep level. And uh, unlike my book, it's, uh, it, it has no code, but it does go through every one of these, uh, these topics and, uh, and he explains it in very plain language. This is actually uh, one of the books that I, I wanted to write because I didn't see anything in it, but uh, anything that did it. But uh, having looked at this uh, book and seeing uh, what it's all about, um, you know, I, I thought it was, uh, I, I thought a lot of it was really good. I, I did buy it myself and I have the Kindle version and I think I'm supposed to get the print version pretty soon as well. Uh, but yeah, it, it's, uh, I, I, I really liked it. And David Harding uh, is giving his endorsement and David Harding 
I uh, like reviewed my book like a, a few times. He wrote the forward for this book. Um, and he he's done a lot of the Bitcoin documentation work. He's definitely a core contributor as well. So, um, you know, very good book. I, I would uh, I would recommend it if you're technical enough to understand a lot of the technical concepts, but you're not sort of like into uh, actually coding it to understand it. Um, this is the book that's sort of in between uh, uh, like maybe like. Uh, Safety's book and my book in terms of like uh, technical information. Uh, I would call mine very technical. This one is in between mine and uh, Safety. Does that make sense? Um, yeah, no, it does. Uh, it also 480 pages, like shit. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of it's diagrams and stuff. It's it, yeah. I, I mean, I, I read the intro. I'm gonna read more of it today and and go through it. Uh, but I remember reading about cryptographic hash functions. That is a really good chapter. Um, he he made it available. That's chapter two, um, and uh, and you know he he made it really understandable, very clear. Uh, you know, like why uh, you know what a cryptographic hash is and why it's important and uh, why it's important that it doesn't get broken and and stuff like that. So. Um, it, it, I, I would definitely recommend this book. Um, I, well, I mean, I haven't read through all of it yet, but at least just, just based on uh, David's endorsement and, so, and such. All right, very, very cool. So go ahead and check that out. And finally, we have a price story that's gonna lead us into price. SoftBank's Masayoshi Son got caught up in the Bitcoin frenzy and reportedly lost $130 million. So how do you lose $130 million? Well, you buy Bitcoin in December of 2017 at $20,000, and then you sell Bitcoin in the beginning of this year at approximately three dollars to $4,000, right? And that's how you end up losing $130 million. Now, normally- 90, 190 these, billion. These, oh, oh, 130 million. Um, so like, this is a good sign that the market has bottomed. Uh, so I've been waiting for more stories like this. I've been waiting for Novogratz. I've been waiting for Tim Draper. I've been waiting for some of the other very high profile people that we kind of knew of uh, that invested big into crypto to capitulate and sell at the bottom. Now, unfortunately, this story comes to us three months late. Uh, having seen this story in, let's say, December or January uh, would have definitely make would have definitely made me more bullish at $3,100. Now we just had a huge debate on this channel, whether the bottom is in, I'm still leaning that the bottom is not in those stories like this do help the bullish case, because this is how markets bottom when uh, people, you know, bank these enormous losses. Now 130 million for him is probably not as big of a deal as it sounds. Uh, now, the fund that he runs is a $190 billion uh, investment fund. And uh, there's some very notable uh, investments in early IPOs and stuff like that. But I thought this was an interesting story. And this is, this is how markets bottom, guys. This is the, the classic market bottom. And uh, I don't know. I'm still waiting for bigger uh, fish. And by bigger fish, I mean... As an individual, this is probably the biggest fish. But as a pooled fund invested in Bitcoin, this is small. Uh, Novogratz had way, has way more invested. Tim Draper has way more invested because they're not individuals. They're, uh, they've pooled money on behalf of others. But as an individual, this is how markets bottom. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of like, I, I think this could be like that bottom signal like you were talking about because uh, a lot of the last bull run was centered around Asia. And this, this, uh, this uh, guy from Asia, obviously, um, that Asia Pacific region where a lot of the frenzy actually was. And, you know, there, there was that famous kimchi premium in Korea, for example. Um, I, 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 I th this very well, uh, like might not be very well known. The store probably isn't getting much play over here in the States, but in Asia, well, yeah, this, this is definitely getting a lot more play. So I, I imagine that 
you know, it took a while, but, um, you know, it, it, this really could be that signal and the big fish that you're looking for maybe aren't here, but they're, they're in Asia. Yeah, I'm with you. All right. Uh, let's head over to price. Uh, unless Jimmy, unless you have to run and then I'm going to pull up your site. Uh, let, I, I, I can show mine after the price. Cause I, I, I actually want to watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so here's the monthly chart. The monthly chart is looking very, very interesting. It's looking pretty bullish. Now you can see my projection of the monthly chart and I am still anticipating lower lows. Now, can this change? Absolutely, it can change. Now, once this month closes in a couple of days, we will see. Uh, but for now, let's get through the current week. Wait, I, why, why is the number on that so low? Because it said 53. Uh, because it, uh, because it's updated once a day, so it's a uh, twelve hours. So that's the price twelve hours ago. Okay. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's an index that updates once a day. So we have to wait till like eight p.m. Eastern time or something. It's unfortunate. Uh, it's the same. Uh, I'm using the same index for this, but it allows me to go back in time further in history. That's why I use it. But I don't use it for real life. So I use this for like long term projections. So obviously we are now above that last moving average on a weekly scale. Uh, the bull trap at 5,100 is clearly no more a bull trap at 5,100 as we go higher. Now, I have said it on several shows over the last couple of weeks that I have been anticipating the breakout of 5,300 and I'm in a leveraged long trade as of like five, six days ago or something like that. I mentioned it first on the show in our debate show uh, with Willie and Murad and Tyler and I had entered that trade the day before, and I did tell the people in my group that I did that. And, uh, and I also mentioned it in yesterday's video. I'm still long in that trade. I'm going to be raising my stop loss. This is now a no-lose trade. We are now uh, consolidating at 5,600. Now, we did break out above this moving average. Today is Tuesday. Let's see if we can hold this moving average on a weekly scale. Uh, but at this point, I am looking at the bottom of this triangle, as being the next set of resistance. And that comes in at around 6150. Now on a daily scale, you can see that this was the no trade zone I was talking about for a few weeks. And the, the reason why I took the long trade, I think I took the long trade on April 20th or April 19th when we were breaking above that range. Now the daily is coming into a nine tomorrow. So tomorrow I would probably be looking to exit that trade. Now, I would love to exit that trade as high a price as possible. So I would love to see one more pop to the 5880, uh, 5850 area. Like 5850 is good enough for me, 5900 if we're lucky. So I can see one more pop uh, in Bitcoin and to get into a nine and maybe even the following candle following the nine. Now, weekly, however, is still a go. Weekly is saying potentially six more weeks of upside not to mention the countdown phase to a 13 sequential weekly. So the weekly still has plenty of room to go, but uh, we still have not had any significant pullback in this price action. Uh, you can see right here, we went from 6,000 all the way to 12,000 and the, the bear market was only getting started. Then we went from 6,500 all the way to 9,000 and the bear market was only getting started. Then we went from 5,800 up to 8,400. Like these are very significant moves in dollar amounts and percentages. So Bitcoin isn't new to um, uh, Bitcoin isn't new to these big rises. Now this one could be more sustainable than the others, and we will see. But either way, a pullback is coming, and I would love to time that pullback. And that pullback may allow me to say that the bottom is in. But for now. I cannot assume that the bottom was in. I believe for me, that would be irresponsible. So the daily chart, I'm looking at tomorrow for a potential exit of that trade and uh, we will see what happens. So definitely stick around tomorrow uh, for when the nine comes. Now here's the 12 hour chart. The 12 hour chart will also be on a nine tomorrow on that second candle tomorrow. And we already have our sequential 13. So the 12 hour chart is also starting to get a little bit toppy. I really like the four hour chart and, the, and my trade entrance was based on the four hour chart. Now the target for this four hour chart 
is approximately 5920. So let's see if we can get there. The four hour chart is about to give you a nine. So it's very likely that there might be a one to four candle correction on a four hour chart as we go into those nines on a 12 hour and the daily. So if you look at the hourly chart, the hourly chart is actually somewhat bullish. Um, oh, let me yeah, get the indication. <laughs> um, right, because like, look, we made this swing high, we pulled back, uh, we hit the nine eventually, we had our one to four candle correction, it was just a single candle, uh, with the nine being a reversal candle as well. And now we're starting to go back up. So the hourly chart is about to give you a 913, uh, both of them. And the hourly chart is now closing at a brand new hourly high close. And that's bullish. So a lot of these charts are very, very bullish. Uh, but tomorrow, um, everything other than weekly is going to be signaling a short term top. And I'll probably be looking to take some of my profits, if not all of my profits from that trade tomorrow. Now the leverage is, has really dropped. This is longs versus shorts. And uh, the leverage is really, really dropping here. So people are, um, so right here, uh, right, come on. So this is the amount of longs uh, divided by the amount of shorts. So the amount of shorts is really starting to rise right now. And that's probably bad. So the, um, the long short ratio is actually pointing to more upside and uh, the bears are leveraging prematurely uh, because look, I'm still in a leverage long trade as longs are starting to deleverage. Hey, Jimmy, we got a $20 tip and a question is directed at you. Um, someone is asking how much for your hat. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, my Stetson, uh, the, these go for a couple hundred dollars. Um, happy to sign one and send one to you if, if you want it. Uh, I mean, you're going to have to cover shipping and like, you know, my time to go to the post office and ship it or whatever. But yeah, I mean, you, there, my email address is on my website and, uh, and you can contact me that way. So, yeah. Oh boy. There's like 1400 people on, you just opened uh, a giant <laughs> can of worms for yourself there. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you may want to put, you know what, that could be good for your store on your website, you know, signed hats, you know, stick a good price on that. And uh, yeah. put a little bit of a premium on the signing and your time of sending it out. But yeah, uh, they're specifically talking about the hat that you have on now. So it's a few hundred bucks. Yeah, I, um, I, 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 I've been working on a store and there's actually a store link at, uh, on, my, on my website. Uh, I've been working with the folks at Blockstream to set up a lightning store and everything. Um, there, there are a couple of problems. So there's kind of like a little soft launch right now. Programming, yeah, there you go. Just click that. And, hey, it'll, it'll redirect me to programming Bitcoin. It's just yeah. in my browser. <laughs> it's programming yeah, blockchain. Yeah, yeah. There you go. And uh, if you go to the store, that's that's uh, that's a new look store, and um, it'll it'll be you know like I I haven't uh, you know I mean it's it's kind of in a soft launch phase uh, right now. It only takes Lightning. I do want to add. Um, BTC pay, so you could just pay in straight Bitcoin instead of uh, Lightning Channel. Um, I'm having some trouble finding inbound uh, inbound capacity, so you might have to directly connect to me if you want to uh, pay direct uh, pay in with uh, Lightning. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I I could put a hat on there. Um, the the trouble with a hat is that you have to get the right size because these are all all fitted and things like that. So something to think about um if, if you are interested yeah we're going to be integrating lightning eventually for the store that i have as well we're going to be adding a lot more items and a lot more cool carnivory shirts as well uh for the store that that i have but all of this sits in like a warehouse so a lot like i'm not actually going to the post office and uh, putting stuff in boxes <laughs> well I, i've had to do that because of my book and you know people want signed books and things like that so yeah, uh, that that's the thing from my store that you'll get is uh, there's uh, you know all, all if you do want my book you're going to get it uh, signed and it's it's digitally signed as well as physically signed so you'll have proof that I signed it um, uh, which is much easier for validation than say you know going to uh, an authenticator or something like that which people do with autographs. 
All right, um, Jimmy, I'm gonna let you say goodbye here. I'm gonna talk about the traditional markets a little bit because there's so much interesting going on with the earnings season. Uh, anything else you wanna say? You have your uh, classes uh, right here with your schedule of where you're gonna be teaching next. I, I am teaching in New York, May 16th and 17th. Um, well, so this is uh, what, what the day looks like and, oh. uh, and how much, just, just click on programming Bitcoin. I have programming blockchain. Just click on that and that will take you to the landing page for that. Um, and yeah, so it's 16th and 17th and it's going to be, uh, you know, in New York. Um, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out exactly the venue based on the number of students and so on. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I, I've had over 400 people come through. That's actually what I'm speaking about at the Magical Crypto Conference which I think is five days before uh, some of the learnings that I have from teaching a bunch of people what the, you know, how to program Bitcoin and what, what that's like. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have people that, ha that are employed at pretty much every major Bitcoin company at this point. Uh, and you know, I, I, and, uh, you know th this is very helpful to get one of those jobs. So uh, if, if that's what you're interested in, please, please apply. To, uh, to take my course. Um, yeah, that and the book. Uh, I think you already know about the book. I've already uh, shilled the book. Um, at some point, I'll start shilling the store. Uh, but right now, it's, uh, it's still kind of in beta. Uh, but yeah, you can, you can order uh, these cheat sheets. Uh, you, can, you can get the book pack, the super pack. And I think uh, the last item, if you scroll down, is just a signed book. Uh, and that's basically me uh, taking it to the post office and well, signing it, taking it to the post office and, uh, and mailing it to you in like, a, you know, wrap package or whatever. So anyway, all of that is available. Uh, please, please give it a shot if, uh, if you're interested. Um, and all right, very cool. With, with that, this song is done. All right. We're going to say goodbye to Jimmy and I'm going to take a look at traditional markets and some of the um, IPOs that have taken place recently. All right. Let's go to... Oh, you know what I'm actually curious on? Gold. I haven't looked at a chart of gold in a long time. Oh, I don't know why I just did that. Um, man, I'm running a lot of stuff on my computer today. I got to go. I, I'm in Mexico, by the way. Uh, talent land. What a giant conference. I've never seen anything like it. I think it's bigger than Comic-Con, bigger than CES. I mean, it's enormous. It's insane. Uh, there's like 30,000 people here. People have to wait six hours to get inside. It's the biggest venue in all of Latin America, not Mexico, in all of Latin America. It's the biggest venue they can find and they are doing their conference here. I will send you guys some pictures. There is everything there. It's from video games to drones to um, hydrophonics to uh, it's uh, the blog. There's a blockchain section. There is. Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. I've never, I've never seen anything like it. <clears throat> uh, okay. So yeah, Google talent land. It's insane. Um, I want, I want to glance at gold real quick only because I haven't done it in a while. I haven't looked at it in over a week. Yeah. I got to grow the beard back. I've been lazy. And uh, to no surprise, gold is going down. Now, everyone made fun of me when I kept saying that gold is going to go to new lows. And I still believe that it will. Now, be careful with gold here because it is on a weekly nine. And being on a weekly nine, uh, it's very possible that we're going to have a bit of a pullback. But this candle looks very, very ugly. So all the gold bugs can you know, send their hate mail my way that I'm uh, holding back gold and uh, it's because of me that gold's going down just like you guys did with Bitcoin. Uh, I have, in reality, I have no control of this stuff and it's all about reading the charts and I've been a bear on gold for a good four to five years now and will remain, and will remain so. I haven't seen any strength in gold in, in a while. So, you know, it's been eight years of bear market in gold and I don't see it ending. I see it continuing uh, into the bear market. All right, here's the daily chart. And the daily chart is on an eight of nine. So maybe tomorrow, tomorrow there could be a trade into gold. Now remember, 
uh, you have just broken prior swing lows and you continue to make lower highs. This is very, very ugly and very, very bad for gold. But tomorrow there could be a rebound. Uh, that rebound should probably give you a new higher low, sorry, lower high, and then it should be all over for gold. I will not, uh, I'll finally, look, it's been a long time coming. I've been very disappointed that gold hasn't bottomed out since 2016. So the, and, and this is my fear in Bitcoin as well, right? Now, what happens if gold does go to new lows? Now, I was disappointed back in 2016. I should probably go to the weekly chart. I was very disappointed in 2015, late 2015, early 2016, that gold never made it back to the $800 area. And by not making it back to the $800 area, it actually potentially delayed the bottoming of gold gold's bear market for up to 10 years, right? For all we know, gold might bottom out at $800 in the year 2022, in the year 2023. So what does that mean? That means gold got delayed to, to bottom out by like seven years. And that sucks. So the, you can apply the same logic to Bitcoin. By Bitcoin not making it down to that $1,500 area, last year or early this year, it's possible that we all we did was delay the price bottom in Bitcoin by a year or two. It's unfortunate, but that could be the reality. Now, just like with gold, had gold made it below a thousand, I would have been a gold bull right now, but by gold reversing prematurely, uh, I've been a bear all throughout, you know, 2016 and 2017 and 2018, and now 2019. So I've remained a bear on the long-term picture of gold all throughout this bull run. And this big run right here in gold reminds me a lot of the current bull run in Bitcoin. It looks great on the surface, but then look what happened for the next, uh, what, two, three years. Now, everything in Bitcoin moves faster. I'm not saying the uh, Bitcoin is gonna do the same, right? But let's suppose that this run in gold, this run up in gold took, um, took over half a year. Now the run up in Bitcoin is actually taking almost as long. It's already taking like two or three months. It's getting there. But then look what happened to gold then after. It got stuck. You know, the, the last high was in 2016. The last low was in November 2015, and we've been stuck for the next three years in the middle of nowhere in gold. Like, I hope that's not the future of Bitcoin, but it is, uh, the, the chart pattern looks very, very similar. Just like I thought gold would go lower, I really thought gold will fall down, would fall down to this line, and had it done that, I would have been a huge gold bull all throughout 16, 17, 18, and 19. So we'll see what happens with Bitcoin. All right, S&P 500 is on a tear. S&P 500 is now at 29.22, and it's really approaching new all-time highs. What was the new, what was the all-time high? Uh, the all-time high on a nine, by the way, was 29.47. Looks like 29.47 was the all-time high. And right now we are at, uh, 29, 24. So we are literally 25 points on the S&P futures from a new high. That is amazing. I was one of the biggest bulls of the stock market this year. And even I didn't think we would break the new all-time highs this year. I thought we were going to you know, get stuck and uh, break the new highs next year, not this year. So the S&P's bullishness has surpassed my extraordinary um, high expectations of the S&P, which again is amazing. Now, the weekly S&P is going to come up on a, seven, on a nine soon in a couple of weeks. So a few more weeks of upside. We are, wow, we are so close to the all-time high. It is crazy. Now, in the S&P cash, the all-time high is 29.40, and we are only 19 points away. We can get there this week with the earnings season, and the earnings season has kicked off very, very nicely.
here is Amazon. And like I said yesterday, uh, Amazon was, I was a big bull on Amazon uh, yesterday saying that, hey, uh, look to exit on right before earnings, Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, this is great. Uh, good job. What was supposed to be my trading partners but in, in our family office, well, in their family. I'm supposed to be a partner in a family office, but I'm too busy doing this. Uh, so the family office is going to have to wait. Uh, great job on Amazon, guys. Uh, and uh, again, since I don't have time to advise and you guys are watching, um, I'd hold on to this thing going into earnings, but not through earnings. I would not be holding Amazon through the earnings date. Uh, but right now, hey, just ride it. Uh, this thing can go to like 1960. Uh, but if I had to choose what's going to happen on earnings, if it's such a big run-up going into earnings, it's, it will be very difficult for earnings to impress. Uh, Amazon, I'm sure Google's doing the same, and it is. Google's right there at the top. Remember, nines are coming, and I think Amazon has a weekly nine, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, there's the weekly nine on Amazon, so don't push your luck. Uh, sometime tomorrow or Thursday, it would be time to get out of Amazon. Um, Apple, same thing. Uh, Netflix has already reported earnings and it's looking great. Uh, the break of the setup trend line, a green two tomorrow above a green one, that's a buying opportunity in Netflix. However, be careful because if Amazon and Google disappoint on earnings, even if they beat earnings, uh, it's a high probability that Netflix would fall along with them. Uh, Tesla is quite the opposite. Tesla will have earnings tonight. Uh, Tesla is reporting tonight. Today is the 24th, I believe. Uh, Tesla, oh, today's the 23rd. They're reporting tomorrow morning, I guess. Uh, it doesn't say if it's pre-market open or post. Uh, oh, it's a weekly chart. That's why it's reporting next week. Never mind. Or later this week, sorry. So it's reporting uh, tomorrow, probably after market closes. I would be, I would not hold Tesla. Right now, Tesla's on a short, but it's very likely Tesla will surprise to the upside because of the way it's been trading. Facebook looks great. Green two above a green one. Uh, earnings are coming. It's all, it's all the same stuff. I believe Twitter reported earnings. Holy mother of Christ. Oh my God. Wow. Is Twitter finally profitable? And uh, so Twitter is closing this gap, which is good. Uh, Twitter topped on a nine at about $45. Man, Twitter is becoming tradable again for earnings season, especially. Wow. Look at that. Uh, Twitter. Good job, Jack. Uh, making Twitter profitable again or for the first time. So that looks good. Uh, that's a good earnings day. I'd wait till tomorrow. I'd wait for it to prove it, but be careful, right? Because like, again, if, if Google and if Google and Amazon disappoint on earnings, uh, Twitter will go down along with them. Uh, let me go over to the fake Zoom because I'm very curious. Uh, this is your shit coin. This is your Ethereum. This is your Cardano, all the rest. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm hoping it goes back to 0 0.05 cents, but we will find out. Let's go over to the real Zoom and look at that. Look at the daily zoom and uh, that's going up. Uh, looks good, looks clean. It doesn't matter if it's overvalued. Uh, the most traders are looking years down the road and zoom's doing well. So there you go. Uh, now I would have loved to buy zoom in the $40 range if it pulled in there, but it didn't. I bet you lift is up big time too. Uh, not that big. It's a green two above a green one. Uh, it's disappointing that I never got my entry into Zoom. I really wanted to buy Zoom at 40 to $45, never got a chance. And now we wait. Uh, I, to be honest with you guys, I think the market is going to top. I think the market is going to top this week or next week. Uh, you know, sell in May and go away is a common theme. Markets do tend to top in early May. I would not be, if I was to be entering long trades right now in the stock market, they would be very, very short. I would rather time the short trade in the market as it exhausts over the next week or two. I think this run up into earnings is really, really high. I still think the market is going to double top in this vicinity, 
pull back and make new highs towards the end of the year, not now. So I am looking for a top in the market and uh, Amazon and Google earnings might just be the ones that do it. So be careful here. And finally, we have Pinterest, which is also rising very, very nicely. Again, as a short-term day trade, uh, the upside is great. But as a longer-term trade, um, I wouldn't do it right now. The markets are kind of toppy at the moment. Uh, I, it's the same view I have on Bitcoin. I think Bitcoin is getting toppy right here. We have a nine coming in uh, tomorrow. Now, the weekly still looks good. But every time frame other than the weekly, any time frame smaller than the weekly, is calling for a potential top uh, to be imminent. And so I would be looking to exit my long trades, um, probably be looking to sell some Bitcoin uh, in early May in order to pay for all of my bills for the rest of the year, because I am a seller here, especially if we can break 6,000. If we can go to 6,150, I would be a seller of Bitcoin. I will gladly take that exit. I will gladly take that price and we will see what happens. Uh, now, I, I barely was glancing at the comments. People seem to be very confused of my comparison between gold and Bitcoin. I'm comparing the chart action. I'm comparing the chart. I'm not comparing the fundamentals of gold to fundamentals of Bitcoin. In fact, it's almost irrelevant. Like the, I don't have to look at the chart of gold. Uh, I could look at a chart of, I don't know, soybeans, avocado prices, doesn't matter. I'm just saying that the chart of gold it looks very, very similar to the chart of Bitcoin. And uh, this run up in gold that took place at the end, at the very end, November or December of 2015 into the summer of 2016 is what Bitcoin is looking like to me. Only Bitcoin fell much more and it's going into a bigger point of resistance, the underside of the triangle, kind of like what this was. Uh, so the chart looks similar. And then gold hasn't been able to do shit since uh, the summer of 2016. And we're now going into the summer of 2019. So that's three lost years for gold other than short-term trading that would probably whipsaw you up and down. So I hope that's not the fate of Bitcoin. But this is what happens when your market doesn't properly bottom. If gold had properly bottomed at 800, uh, then uh, we could have been on our way up to new all-time highs. Uh, but when a market doesn't properly bottom, it creates these uh, very bad patterns and very bad distortions. Uh, so uh, I hope that's not Bitcoin's fate. But right now, the similarity is very, well, I see a large similarity uh, in this case. Bitcoin is breaking weekly resistance as far as moving averages go. But this underside of the triangle is going to be formidable. So I will be a seller here at 6150. If, uh, if my positions get that high, if I don't get out earlier, I will definitely be a seller there. Also be uh, probably a seller of some of my hodl positions uh, because I want to prepay my bills for the rest of the year at a good price because I still think there is a high chance that the bear market is not over. All right, guys. Please check out our very famous now episode. Uh, oh, also check out the Understanding Bitcoin YouTube channel. We're almost at 100 subscribers. We will be posting all of the videos from day two uh, sometime this week. They're being uploaded now. Uh, and that's what we're doing on that end. And if you go over to my channel, what is perhaps one of my most popular videos right here, the has Bitcoin bottom debate. Let's see if we can get that to 50,000 views. I think uh, we're right now in the vicinity of the uh, highest viewed show I've ever done. Uh, and I've never had a 50,000 view show on this channel. So I'm really hoping to break the 50,000 barrier. And uh, this was our debate uh, with myself, Willie Wu, Tyler, and others. All right, go ahead and check that out. Head on over to my website. Uh, if you want to know where I am, because people always ask where I am, and I just keep telling them, just go to my website and look at the public calendar. It'll tell you where I am. And right now I am in Mexico for Talent Land. My presentation will be at 4 p.m. today on the main stage. Google Talent Land. It is insane. The biggest conference I have ever attended in my life. And um, 
After that, I'm off to Mexico City. And after that, I will be in New York for consensus and um, other events and my workshop. And after that, I will be off again. I will be, whoa, what happened here? There it is. I'll be heading to Malta and, uh, uh, oh, I think we removed Italy from the, uh, from the workshop list. Uh, I, might, I might go to Istanbul. I'm deciding maybe I'll stay in Malta and then Bulgaria. And then you can also check out what I'm doing the following month where I will be in Amsterdam and then on the blockchain cruise. And, uh, and then I will come back to the US uh, to go to Porkfest. I will also be in Germany. Uh, okay, so go ahead and check that out. If you want the indicator, you can click there and um, you know, workshops, you guys know the deal. All right, um, that's enough for me. I will see you all on the next one. Time to head over back to talent land. Later guys.